feedback in AP Myology. In this video, we're going to review what feedback is, explain positive and negative feedback me mechanisms, as well as go over some examples of both and how they affect or help maintain homeostasis. So feedback is used by organisms to maintain their internal environments and respond to internal and external changes. We can also see feedback loops in at the cellular level, the organismal level, or at an environmental or population level. Feedback is a response within a molecule, cell, organism, even an ecosystem that influences the continued activity or productivity of a system. Feedback loops help regulate homeostasis, or the internal balance all organisms need to survive. So the failure to maintain homeostasis can cause disease or death, meaning that the failure to maintain feedback loops can also lead to disease or death. Feedback loops are really important in biologic systems, and we're going to review some of the types of them right now. There are both what we call negative feedback loops and positive feedback loops. These don't mean something that are good or bad, rather they refer to the inhibition or slowing down of a system versus the amplification or the increase of a system. Negative feedback loops result in the inhibition or the slowing down of a process, moving something back to that set point, that internal balance that an organism wants to maintain. Positive feedback loops, on the other hand, amplify a signal or some sort of output. Now, negative feedback loops, like I said, will work to maintain homeostasis and go back toward a set point. Positive feedback loops are generally going away from a set point, and they're working against what the normal system would normally be. This isn't a bad thing, but generally it's not normal. In negative feedback loops, these are more common within organisms and they maintain various body systems. Our temperature regulation, our blood pressure regulation, our blood sugar regulation are all examples of how negative feedback loops help us maintain our internal environments. You may see an example of blood pressure or blood sugar regulation on an AP exam, so we're going to go over what that could look like in just a moment. Positive feedback loops, though less common, are still necessary in certain situations. Childbirth and having the contractions of the uterus in order to deliver a child is obviously really important for mammals. Fruit ripening, producing ethylene, for example, is another positive feedback loop that's necessary for the ripening of apples on a tree. Lactation in mammals also helps, uh, is helped by positive feedback loops and the release of oxytocin, and blood clotting as well, which we'll go over as an example in this video. So a negative feedback loop, remember, is going back towards a set point. So if we start with a normal blood pressure and then an organism is exposed to stress, the blood pressure would rise above normal. Now the body receptors are going to detect change and then de decrease a heart rate and increase the blood vessel diameter. These effects will then help decrease the blood pressure and bring the blood pressure back to normal, back to that set point. This feedback loop would then stop here unless the body is exposed to more stress. A positive feedback loop uh, related to blood clotting kind of works in a different way. If we have a break in a blood vessel wall from a cut or a laceration, platelets are then going to adhere to the site and start to release chemical signals. Those chemicals will then attract more platelets and platelets will adhere to the site and release more chemical signals. This will continue to amplify the signal, which doesn't normally happen in the body, and more and more platelets will come until finally we have what's called a platelet plug that is formed at the site of the break. Then the cycle ends, we don't have any more chemicals to attract more platelets because we don't need them anymore. Similar with childbirth, once the child is delivered, the contractions don't need to amplify because the goal has been achieved. But this entire process was not what normally happens, it goes away from homeostasis. Let's take a look at another positive feedback loop that can happen within the environment. Now, the positive feedback loop example I'm going to use is called ice albedo, and albedo indicates what percentage of solar radiation or sunlight is reflected by a surface. Generally, ice is white and very reflective, um, but the ocean surface is dark and absorbs heat faster. So when we have an environment where temperatures are rising and we have ice melting, the ice or the white reflective surface is going away, which is going to increase the water that's exposed and therefore absorb more heat in the environment. That'll then cause temperatures to rise and more ice to melt. The more ice that melts, the more water that is exposed, and you can see how this cycle is a positive feedback loop. Now, this isn't necessarily the same type of feedback that's gonna happen within a, an organism or a cell, but it is an example of positive feedback within an ecosystem. So I want you thinking about this when we get to our unit on ecology. 
feel free to go back and watch the short video again. I hope you enjoyed our video on feedback loops.